Yo, what is up, guys? Joker bringing you another video for Diablo 4 and its first season, the season of the malignant. Earlier today, we had a dev live stream going over all of these facts for season one, and I figured I'd go ahead and make a string of videos kind of breaking it down because there was a lot and it was like a three hour live stream, right? So I figured I can make a short string of videos going over everything that you'll need to know going into season one. Real quick before the video starts, I just wanted to go over how this is going to work. So in case you've never seen my Path of Exile videos, essentially when we get a big announcement, I do a very broad overview of a TLDR, everything we got in, in the announcement. And then in the upcoming two weeks, that's when I have the more specific videos of the what to's and the how to's and stuff like that. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date. Make sure you're able to catch those more in-depth videos later in the week. So jumping right into it, right? Diablo 4, the season of the malignant starts July 20th. Let's go ahead and take a look at its trailer. I am writing to you because although a great eagle is receding from sanctuary, a new festering curse now spreads its corruption across the land. More dangerous more malignant than I could have imagined. I have found a way to stop this plague, to rip the dark power of these monsters from their very core and turn it to our advantage in destroying them. But I cannot do this alone. My allies have fallen. My strength is dwindling. The malignant are relentless and without mercy. I need help. I need you. Okay, so very cool. So to break it down, what we're going to be doing in the season, we're going to be helping this new NPC and we're going to be fighting pretty much juiced up elites, right? The juiced elite is going to drop its heart. We're going to interact with the heart once it drops and it's going to start a fight. It's going to spawn a whole bunch of empowered mobs plus an empowered version of the elite that we just killed. Once we finish this fight, we're going to seal their heart, and that heart is then going to become one of the 32 malignant powers, which work in a very similar way to the legendary aspects, right? The only difference is you can only put them on jewelry pieces, and there is specified slots on the jewelry pieces that you can put it. As an example, if you drop a red re malignant heart, it can only go into a red malignant slot and so on and so forth, right? And then jewelry, obviously, is only our two rings and our amulet. With the unnecessary malignant hearts or the crappy powers that we receive, we are able to go ahead and vendor them. And it sounds like that's what's going to give us an item much like the Nightmare Dungeon sigils, right? where we're going to be able to find malignant tunnels. And these malignant tunnels are not only going to be having a boss fight in them, potentially, it's going to be giving us an area where we can farm malignant powers. That way you don't have to try to run into random NPCs. You can actually go farm these materials and seek out these dungeons. Once again, it sounds a lot like the way you do nightmare dungeons. In addition, there is six new unique items to discover and seven new legendary aspects to earn from the season pass, uh, the season journey as well, excuse me. Now, this is all going to be available as soon as July 18th, right? That's when it's going to patch and you're going to be able to have access to the new legendary aspects and the new uniques. Uh, the season itself does not start until the 20th, so you're going to have to keep that in mind. The main reason why you want to log in on the 18th is because that's when it's going to be snapshotting your character. So you're going to want to log into the character that you have the most progress in, and that's when it's going to snapshot your map, your Lilith altars, your renown, your completion of the campaign, all of that. So make sure you do that as soon as you can on the 18th. 
the next thing is essentially going to be your season journey. This works pretty much the same way that it did in D3, where you complete X amount of air, uh, X amount of task in an area, right? In this example, you only have to complete seven out of the nine to complete this chapter one, and then it's going to unlock chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, so on. And as you can see, a lot of it is some of the very basic things. Collect some resources, go into a dungeon, Engine. And then these are the rewards I was mentioning, where it is the caches for the completion, which is going to give you supplies. But on top of that, the additional legendary aspects, which it sounds like you can only receive through the season journey. On the flip side of the season journey, this is the battle pass. We get to the part of the video that's a little controversial, which I have no reason why it is. Because Blizzard has held true, this battle pass does not include any power. There is only cosmetics in this. The only thing that is quote-unquote power without even being power is the sacred ashes. And you're going to be receiving those from just doing the season pass. You don't have to pay for those. Those are come in the base pass. Those are free to play. And I'll explain those here in a second. I just wanted to stop to say, hey, if you hear anything about the Battle Pass, it's not true if people say it's pay to win because there's literally no player power in this Battle Pass. The only reason you pay for a higher level Battle Pass is for additional cosmetics. If you're unhappy about that, I, I don't know what to tell you. That's the fairest that Blizzard would be able to make it. Now... The sacred ashes that I was mentioning are going to be earned along the battle pass, and these are in, once again, the free battle pass, so you don't have to pay anything, just complete your season journey and your battle pass, and you'll be receiving 20 of these sacred ashes. These sacred ashes are going to be giving you natural boost to the season, as you can see, you're going to be receiving, what, 12% extra EXP, 20% gold. 20 no 40 percent rare materials from salvaging 60 percent increased potion duration and 20 percent uh, additional drop rate of the season mechanic right so a lot of really cool powers but once again battle pass is not pay to win only pay for it if you want additional cosmetics and that's it. That's everything that I found important out of this developer live stream that we got. So we had the season start date. We had what the season was. We went over the rewards. We went over the new items. Obviously, I'm going to be going over more details as we get them as well and other videos going more in depth like I mentioned. But that's essentially it for this video. I just wanted to give you that TLDR of what's going on. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future videos. And until next time, take care.